Hey guys, welcome back. So today we're going to cover something that I've been wanting to film for months and we're just now doing it. We're going to talk about crankshaft trigger wheels. And we're not just going to say, hey, it's got more teeth, it's better. You can check out some other videos for that, but that's not what we're going to do here. We're going to go over why, which wheel is better and why, and explain why the teeth matter and what, what about the teeth matter. We're going to go into all that. So just a quick intro, uh, the trigger wheel, Here's the crankshaft on the engine, or on my engine, and my harmonic dampener basically slides on here. And right around this area somewhere is where the trigger wheel's, uh, well, it's gonna be up here. It's gonna be up here, spinning, because that's where your timing belt goes. But anyway, you'll have a crank sensor that's kind of like fixed to the engine, and as the crankshaft turns, it picks up those teeth, and that tells it where the engine is. Well, that's kind of broad. We're gonna be a little more specific in a minute. But that's a critical thing. Like, if you look at an engine and say, what would you absolutely have to have to run? It's fuel, uh, what do you need? Air's kind of a given, right? So you got fuel, compression, and spark. Those are the three things, right? So for spark, you gotta know where the crankshaft is. Uh, compression's a mechanical thing, so that's kind of a given too. So really it's fuel and spark. So this is your spark that uh, we're gonna go over. So when we say the engine sparks, like on a boosted engine, this is really important. Everyone knows what detonation is, you know. Basically, you start burning the fuel-air mixture, all of a sudden something gets too hot, you get a second flame front, the two flame fronts hit each other, and it causes a big spike in pressure, and that breaks... There's all kinds of repercussions after that. You basically... We could do a whole video on that, but you get into, like, boundary layer effects and all kinds of stuff. We'll do that another time. But it's bad. Detonation is bad. So on a race engine or any even a hot street motor, it's real important that you get your ignition timing correct. And by correct, I don't mean safe, I mean correct. If you put your ignition timing too retarded, that causes more sets of problems. It won't cause detonation, but it'll cause really high EGTs. So, oh, I have these blocked. Let's see if I can show you an example. See how that looks a little wet? Maybe, I don't know if that shows up real well. Some of these are worse than others, but my valve stem uh, seals are going out. And that's because of high EGTs. This motor, I ran the timing really soft and I ran 40 pounds of boost on it. And I've changed these valve stem seals probably three or four times and they just die because uh, <laughs> my timing was too soft and my EGTs are too high. And then that puts high temps in your manifolds. So that can cause your uh, turbo manifolds to crack and it can cause your turbine housings to crack. I've been kind of lucky my manifold has surprisingly held up pretty good. I haven't had to repair anything. I mean, you know, knock on wood, who knows? But I do have a good turbo, so that hasn't had a problem. But high EGTs can cause all kinds of issues. So you kind of want to avoid unnecessarily having high EGTs. Bad for the valves too. So too much timing's bad, too little timing's bad. So you need the perfect amount of timing or at least something close. And this is where you get into uncertainty. So you think about how an engine works, how this schedules events. So I happen to know a decent amount about this, but um, let me just kind of keep it simple. Let's pretend this pencil is our crankshaft sensor, right? So here's the engine, you know, it spins. And when a tooth goes by, it says, hey, I know where the crankshaft is. But what about when it's over here, or it's over here, or it's over here? It doesn't actually know where the crank is. Not until this next tooth comes in. So let's say we have a tooth at 10 degrees before top dead center, because I believe on a Miata, one of the teeth actually does hit at top 10 degrees before top dead center. So if this engine was rotating, this tooth is, uh, I think, I'm going off memory, I believe this tooth is 80 degrees before top dead center. So that's 80, and then you get like 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, and there's 10. So you might want to spark at 30 or 40 degrees before top dead center, or even 20 or... Say if you're in high boost, you might be sparking at like 20 degrees, 15 degrees. So you haven't quite got to this tooth yet. So this whole time you got a tooth here, you're having to wait and wait and wait and wait and wait. And you're trying to guess where the crankshaft is. That's the key. Please, please understand that. You're guessing where the crankshaft is because you don't actually know until a tooth comes by. When a tooth comes by, you say, hey, I know exactly where I'm at. And if you know where the previous tooth was, so say you had this tooth, you say, hey, well... We know that that tooth happened a little while ago, and then, you know, presently, right here, we know where the tooth is. So if you know how long this took from this tooth to this tooth, 
he can calculate the velocity of the engine. So you measure position here, you measure position here, the change in position divided by the change in time, that's your velocity. That tells you how fast it's going. Now, if you know how fast it's going, then you can basically calculate or estimate when the next tooth is going to get there. What this doesn't do is take into effect, uh, into effect acceleration because engines accelerate up and down. Now, this is amplified when you make more power. So you can think of, uh, man, I don't have a great example, but you can imagine like a wheel. Oh, here we go. This is terrible, but I'll do this because I can do it quickly. This is a wheel has uh, some inertia, right? So it'll keep spinning for a while. So if this wheel was heavier, it would spin longer. But since this wheel doesn't have a lot of weight and it doesn't really have like ball bearings, it's just a, you know, or whatever it has, the bearings suck, it comes to a stop pretty quick. So if this had a lot of weight to it, once you got it moving, it would be at like a more constant velocity. It'd be more predictable. Now, instead of me lightly hitting it with my hand, if I took a hammer and just smacked it like super hard, it would jerk and quickly change, it quickly accelerate. Well, that's kind of what engines do. When the pistons fire, they push the crankshaft and go, boom, fuck you, turn faster. So you get these impulses of torque. And you can just imagine the more boost you're running and the more power you're making, those impulses are more and more uh, severe. Now add on top of that, when people build race engines, they don't go around adding mass to the rotating assembly. In fact, you're usually taking mass out. You're doing lighter pistons, lighter rods, very common to run a lightweight flywheel, things like that. So you're actually taking mass away. So now the, in, the bottom end can respond quicker, but there's, it's harder to guess where everything is because you don't have all that inertia. So let's go back to this. So now that we kind of understand the fundamentals, it might start to make sense why having more teeth is better because now once you know where you are, you don't have to wait as long until you get your next tooth to again know where you are. So you can imagine if this thing only had one tooth, then the one tooth would go by, the crank would have to make an entire revolution until you got your next tooth. You'd just be guessing. So that's why more teeth is generally better. So knowing that a generally more teeth is going to be better, let's look at this one. This one has, it's a 36 two. So 36 teeth evenly spaced, uh, 360 divided by 36 is 10. So every tooth is 10 degrees and they take away two of them. This is obviously from Flying Miata. It's a very high quality part. This is actually the one I'm gonna run on my car. Um, we'll talk about why in a minute. But uh, here we can see if this was say 10 degrees before top dead center, then I only have to rotate 10 more degrees and boom, now I know where I am again. The key to this, so say I'm running on a race car, let's see. I should have marked a tooth be rich just a second okay so when we were talking about the mazda we said that this tooth was at 80 and this tooth was at 10. i think those numbers are correct now let's look at the flying miata let's line this up with the m and let's just call that 10 for this example so this tooth would be 20 30 40 50 60 70 this would be 80 right there so if i wanted to run like a common ignition advance on a Miata is going to be in boost. You're going to be somewhere in the probably 15 degree range, roughly. Depends on what kind of fuel you're running. Maybe 20, 25, but typically a lot of Miatas run in the 10 to 20 degree ignition advance in boost. So if I'm over here at say 15 degrees, well, I got to go from 80 all the way to 15. That is what, 65 degrees where I have had no tooth. And I'm just having to guess exactly where I am. Whereas if I'm using the Flying Miata one and I'm trying to run 15 degrees, well, I got a tooth at 20. And I only have to project 5 degrees into the future when to fire that event. So at 20 and 30, so say I had a tooth at 30 and I know what time that happened. And then I get a tooth at 20 and I know what time that happened. I've measured the velocity of the crankshaft in the last 10 degrees. So this measurement over here, when I measured the velocity, I would have had to use this tooth which is 110 degrees from this one. So when I hit this tooth, I said, okay, I know my velocity over the last 110 degrees based on a number over a huge range. Now I'm gonna estimate when 15 degrees is gonna happen, right? Whereas here, I've got a very short distance, say 30 to 20 to measure my velocity. And then I can calculate 15 and fire my spark plug at 15 before I've gotten the next tooth. So you can see 
you can physically see that there's just less uncertainty because there's less distance. I've got a I've got a more accurate velocity because it's right here, and I just don't have to project into the future. I only have to project five degrees, not 65 degrees. That's what, 13 times better, roughly, or exactly. So, awesome. So then you get to the next question. Well, it sure, I mean, the math kind of shows more teeth is better, so we should probably just use this one. This has a shit ton of teeth. I believe it has 60 teeth. I didn't count it, but it's something like that. But it's a lot. 60 is, I think, what it has. So... This should be even better, basically the same math. You would have only six degrees per teeth. So if I wanted to run, you know, depending on where they're spaced, uh, the worst you're ever gonna have to go is like 5.9 degrees of guess before you get another tooth. Whereas here you could have basically 9.9 .9 degrees roughly before you get your next tooth. So this should be better, but it's not. And let's talk about why. So when you're measure, when you're an engine, let me see, okay. So I was trying to decide if I'm gonna keep this going. So from the engine standpoint, we were talking about taking the difference between the teeth and using that to calculate into the future. There's an assumption baked into that idea. The assumption is that the teeth are evenly spaced. Now that should be a safe assumption. I'll give you that, but guess what, it isn't. So, it, so from the Mazda one, it's obvious it's not because these are totally different. However, Mazda takes this into account. In software, they're programmed that, hey, you're going to have a 70 tooth, and then you're going to have a 110, and then a 70, and a 110. So they know what it is. Now this one, it's all the same. It's 10 degrees per tooth, or it's supposed to be. And then this one, it's supposed to be 6 degrees per tooth. Let me show you the problem. This is going to require some zoom in. So here's the Mazda one. Let's look at this tooth. There she is. Let's look at another tooth. There it is. There's another Okay, nothing really exciting, right? If we really look at that tooth, you can see it's got a slightly rounded edge. There's no sharp edges. Um, there's the last one. These teeth are actually in pretty good shape. Now let's look at the flying Miata one. We'll start up here with the tooth that's at 10. You'll see these also have slightly rounded edges uh, going into the base and at the top of the tooth, which is good. They appear to be evenly spaced. We'll measure that in a second. And now let's go to the Fab 9 one. Let's check these teeth out. Notice anything? How about it? Notice anything? Look at these teeth. There's no radiuses. These are sharp edges, but they're not even square. This is like janktastic. So, let's see. Look at this tooth. Like, what the fuck's going on? And then look at this next tooth next to it. Like, you can tell... These aren't even the same size tooth. Like, see how this one's literally bigger than that one? And it's got this goofy thing going on, on the right side. There's a big tooth. I mean, these are just, they're totally not consistent from tooth to tooth. Now, so that's a problem and that can cause all kinds of issues. The other thing is spacing. Now, I could do this on camera, but I've already done this before. And these teeth just don't measure the same when you keep checking each one. And part of the reason is because like we said, they're they're like, poor quality the way they're made. The teeth aren't even uh, the same tooth to tooth. Some of this will show up in video. Like right there, you can kind of see that one tooth is narrow and one tooth is wide. And then, yeah, this is a pretty good example. So this one has a square edge and then this one just has like a corner off of it. So weird. So basically, this thing, this uh, Fab 9, is a pile of garbage. And there's not a chance that I'm putting this on my car. It does have more teeth, but we're actually, it's, it's counterproductive. We're trying to reduce uncertainty by adding teeth, but then we're adding uncertainty by not keeping the teeth consistent from tooth to tooth. Now this is just because of low quality, because Fab 9, unfortunately, the way they do stuff, sometimes it's a win, sometimes it's a loss. This is definitely a loss. Don't Nobody should run this until they update their design and prove that they fixed this, because crap like this can cause you to blow your engine up. And the reason is, you're guessing where the ignition is when you think you got a tooth. So remember when we talked about over here, we would say between 20 and 30, you'd calculate your velocity and use that to project when your next tooth is? Well, if you get the tooth quicker or slower than you thought, you're going to calculate a wrong velocity and then schedule an event in the future based off of an inaccurate velocity. Now, the good thing is you only have six degrees per tooth, so the amplitude of that shouldn't be too high. But this is just common sense. Why would you pay money to buy a part 
like this that's just so poorly made. Uh, it just makes no sense. What they're doing is they're building something that looks like a good part, but it's not actually a good part. So that's out of the mix. There's no way that's going on my car. Now this one is from Flying Miata. And what I noticed when I got it was how consistent everything was. I took a caliper and ran it. I see one little spot right there. I think that's actually paint. But I took a caliper and I measured tooth to tooth to tooth and I only saw like a one or two thou variance. And it makes me think that these are water jet. If it's laser, they did a really good job with the laser because this one over here, I think is laser, like, or hell, it almost looks plasma cut, it's so terrible. But I'm just gonna pretend it's laser, but this thing's horrible. Uh, but yeah, this one is much, much smoother and even between the teeth. So this should give me a nice, consistent, accurate number from tooth to tooth. And like I said, the only thing that would make this better is if it had even more teeth. But you get into the point of diminishing returns uh, with adding teeth. So like here, Mazda only had four teeth. If they had done eight teeth or something, it would drastically help because you get a, a bigger, uh, you get a more accurate number sooner. So it cuts your inaccuracy. Uh, it's really beneficial. But once you get down to this point where you only got 10 degrees per tooth, you only have to project a very short window. So this is basically good enough. Even though more teeth is better, practically speaking, there just isn't much uncertainty going from 20 to like say from 30 to 20 you calculate your velocity and you got to schedule something at 18 degrees 15 degrees 12 degrees there just isn't a lot of crank rotation that's going to happen and the thing is what you're worried about is when things change so are things changing from here well yeah but it's just a short distance so i wanted to make this video um hopefully that helped you guys out some you know a little bit more about how these work and what's important and what you're looking for and uh, like I said, uh, won't be running this one because of the poor quality. If this had been machined correctly, I would run it because more teeth is better. That's actually why I bought it. I, I bought this first. Um, I went looking out, you know, I'm sure you guys do the same thing. You're like, hey, I want to buy the best parts for my car. And I knew Flying Miata made this and a few other companies do. But I looked around and I said, you know, these people have a higher tooth count and that is just better. So I bought this one instead. I think it even cost more, but I bought it. And as soon as I got it, I realized how junky it was. And I got mad, and I thought about trying to deal with Fab 9, and I've, it's just not worth it. This part costs like 50 bucks maybe, and it's just not worth the headache to try to deal with those guys. So I just said, you know what, I'll make a video on it and move on. So hopefully you guys have learned something about what to avoid and what to look for, and how the, kind of how these work and how they affect your car, and how this even affects, you know, yes, it affects ignition accuracy, but I mean, at the end of the day, this actually affects the reliability of your engine. And that's why this is important. So anyway, until next time, hope you guys take it easy.